So welcome everyone to June 23rd for our June rec board meeting. Um, so I sent the minutes uh, from May 5th. Uh, did anyone have any corrections or additions? Just thank you. Very much. So if no corrections or additions, can I have a motion to approve the minutes? K-A-R-R-I-E. It's spelled right at the top, but it's spelled wrong at the end. Oh, damn, really? Are you serious? I, I am. I love you, Randy. I'll approve the minutes. Just put my name with the K-A. <laughs> Where, where's the wrong one? At, on the second page. Kerry and Brittany said it should be usable for small children. I was making a joke and it's now not funny. All right, so Mav, so K-A-R-R-I-E made a motion to them. approve the minutes as long as her name is corrected on page two. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, Dan, second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, approved. Oh, okay. here's Manny. Hey, everyone. Hi, Manny. Hi, Manny. Hello. Hi, Manny. Hello. Um, so, Manny, uh, Manny, we just approved the minutes. So, can I have? Uh, did you have a chance to look at them? Will you equally approve them? Yes. Okay. Because so now they're fully approved. Um, okay, uh, Jason, do you want to talk about future projects for Scouts? Um, sure. So I think uh, I was having a discussion with Trustee Lucas and we thought maybe we can brainstorm. Um, we've been getting a lot of requests lately from different um, Boy Scout and Girl Scouts for a different Silver Award or Eagle Scout project. Um, currently we are doing uh, two which were presented to you. One was the Gaga Pit, the Eagle Scout project that's for Florence Park. And the other one is um, the for the birds down at the Marine Education Center with Kathleen right. and her group. And we dive down one with Dan's daughter, uh, uh, Lily, right, Dan? Yes. Yep. yep. I done one the the free little libraries with Lily. We did that one. Um, and it seems like the pattern, at least over the last few years, is that we've been getting two or so requests a year um, from some sort of local kids to do to to do projects, which I think is which I think is wonderful. Um, but we wanted to, you know, the kids also may ask or what we think needs to be done. So maybe as a group, um, we can brainstorm on some ideas for uh, projects in the parks that can be done for for. Uh, Eagle Scout or or Silver Award or Gold Award too. Say that again. Or Gold Award. That's I've good. never done a gold one. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, I've yeah, done Silver good. and Eagle, but so, Gold is a, a new one. That gold I've, is yeah. high school Girl Scouts and Silver is middle school Girl Scouts. Gotcha. gotcha. That would be Lily coming up, right? I think so. Yep. yep. Hope so. She's in the queue. That's so, great, Dan. Um, any thoughts? I mean, I'll tell you from my experience, the the kids, because that's what they are. They're young kids, the young adults are like, these kids are amazing. They're super driven. And um, like the one me and Je Jeff uh, did with the uh, Kyle was like, we had plans and itineraries and material like like it's really impressive what they can come up to get come up with um but if we can help steer them in a direction um you know i mean obviously there's simple simple things like painting light poles and stuff but i think the kids want to do something a little bit more complex than that you know what i mean um it's great to be able to you know like i think uh maybe someone did one recently with the town of Merrick where they cleaned up the cemetery uh i believe i read something about that we don't, well, they, we don't. they have to have a project sponsor that like some sort of a community group and they have to have a project that's sustainable so that it continues when they're complete when they're not involved with it 
So sometimes they start a program, sometimes they build something that's sustainable. I think in the case of the libraries, the libraries have a shelf, have an X amount of life, but there are backup ones so that they can be replenished. So it's just a matter of having a project that the community sponsor actually wants done. Right. And that also meets the scouts' interest because they have to spend quite a bit of time on it. So it's always nicer if the kids are really working on something that interests them. Well, I would just like to give more time to consideration. I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. I'm just mulling over all the additional uses of the park I've seen this year from starting from when COVID happened, mm -hmm. at least Harbor Island Park. There seems to be more fishing and, and that kind of thing. Um, and I know we had the girls make a presentation about not feeding the waterfowl, if I remember right. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. And there's a couple of very limited kind of nature signs um, on, in the West Basin on Rushmore side and those could be, you know, improved and more information provided. I think the county provided those signs years ago. I just seem to see a lot more, you know, parks users than there were before. So anything that can engage them would be great. So. Okay, well, I think that's a great idea. There's lots of uh, Girl Scouts especially love nature and nature type projects. So anything and anything anybody else can come up with, we'll uh, let's revisit that and see when we've had a little more time to contemplate that. Okay. And is this um, for the Boy Scouts? Is it Boy Scouts or Eagle Scouts or both? Both Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. So I, I, so the Eagles, the so the Girl Scouts have two separate projects for different age groups, middle school and high school. Typically, Eagle Scouts earn their award or work on their award in high school, but they have these other prerequisites that happen beforehand. But I'm not sure that they end up in these big service projects. They have to, you know, they have. There's a different path to starting your Eagle Award than there is to starting your Gold Award. So, what age group are we looking to brainstorm idea, ideas so middle, for? Middle school and high school, both. Okay. Middle school and, high. and middle school kids for Girl Scouts can work as a team. The high schoolers work individually, but they have to get people to help them with their projects. Okay, so this is thanks. middle. End. Thanks, Nora. You're welcome. It's a, um, it's a big, big commitment. It's very, these, it, what these kids do is very impressive. So Jason, do you want to give us the summer update before we go into the capital projects, which will probably be a longer discussion? Sure. So I'll just give a quick, quick update. Um, so camp is full uh, starting on Monday. Um, we just got all the restrictions have been lifted like this week. We were, we've been working under like constraints, then a little less and then a little less and then another plan, another plan, another plan, and then they take it all away. So in the end, you know, that's good. Uh, I suppose that we're doing that well. Um, we um, are, we did an outdoor movie um, already. We're gonna plan on a few more outdoor movies um, in the July and July, August timeframe. Um, the beach is open. Um, people are swimming. The spray ground recently got approved for seven days a week usage, which is wonderful. Um, and it's been pretty busy so far um, on the days that uh, weather has been been decent. Um, the carnival set up, that's going on as planned. So that's pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're busy down here. We have a lot going on. Um, Jeff Did we ever remove the, the gunder boom? Yeah, the boom's out. That's another thing. I felt like that was like months ago. It feels like that was like not that long ago. Um, that was probably less than a month ago. Boom's out. Um, if you've seen it, we have a swim lane, swim line in there to designate the perimeter and buoys and stuff. And so it looks very similar. We just don't have the boom floating. So that's out. The removal process went, went well. Um, and so far, 
at least the water quality numbers that I've been getting from the county or that the manager's office gets the county and forwards us have been all positive in terms of um, the CF, you know, the fecal chloride amounts have been low, um, which is good. Um, and just visually, the water looks clean, clearer than ever. It's just like you could see deeper than I've ever, like I threw a shell in the water the other day off the pier. I was like, wow, I saw that for a while. Um, so that, that's going good. The beach is clean. Um, we got our 4th of July decorations up. So if you come around the park, take a, take a stroll by the beach, it's pretty nice. We've done uh, quite a few deck parties, like two a week, uh, two like a weekend day. So two on Saturday and two on Sunday. So that's been really popular and um, dates are filled. Uh, what else can I tell you? Um, yeah, uh, spring sports just ended. Um, summer Little League Baseball start just started. Um, and before you know, it'll be September and fall sports will be starting uh, pretty quickly. Right. Um, yeah. Any how's, specific how's the kayak questions? usage been down at the... Oh, that's another thing, Dan. Thank you. Um, so we've done, in terms of just programming, I'll start with the programming portion first. We have have sold out of our first offerings of kayak programs. So we, we put up more. We have stand-up paddleboard uh, programs that are going really well. That's like those classes fly off the roof. Um, I know that they have, in terms of like storage, there's there's uh, a kayak rack, right, Jeff, on that it was built? And yeah, we, we built one kayak rack. Right, they got one kayak rack. I think he's working on seeing what the price on wooden is to do some sort of sup launch as well. Um, but materials are through the roof right now. But I know, I saw an email recently that he was looking into it. Uh, Jeff LaRusso, that is the Harbor Master. Where, where, where would this tennis paddleboard launch go? I am not sure. It's a good. That's a good question, but I will ask Jeff for you. I just saw an email going around because somebody did ask, and Jeff said he was looking into pricing, but I'm not sure exactly where that would go. So I I sent an email around to this group um, last week, I think, about that new kayak rack and the ramp. Um, and I probably should have attached a picture because it looks terrific. I mean, it really yeah. is. They, they actually offered me, we were on the top of the old rack and we got a call and we are now at the bottom of the new rack. Ooh. So I'm hoping it's got be a better much spot. That's much huge. Easier access. But, um, it's a really interesting topic on next door. And I'm really not great on the social media, but I do see a lot of questions about kayak access and where can I run out kayak and that kind of thing. And I'll typically, it's the only time I ever post on there was to say, call the Carver Master or call the Village Rec Department because they have a kayak program. Yeah, but we don't I rent. noticed that they, what's that? That's the only thing we don't do. We don't rent kayaks. Oh, like, I thought we were it, renting. I thought there was a program. Maybe many years ago, but it's been a long time since I, maybe when I first started. Oh, uh, okay. That's good to we know. We haven't rented in quite a long time, but we do a ton of classes, like all the weekdays, weekends, weeknights, early mornings sub too we do get a lot of rentals it's just we're just not there yet there's a lot of safety legal issues sure, and, yeah I mean, yeah that go into that and financially it's not like we're going to make a ton off of it no, you know? of course i mean it seems like it would be an ideal thing for dave castarella to do out of the bait shock exactly so, something like that it's like where nancy used to be but, right, but exactly. the other reason people seem to be posting is um i guess there's now limited access at that informal launch point on Bleecker Street. Um, I assume it's because the neighbors were complaining. So now people want to know where can they launch your kayaks into the harbor. Right, so, so Dan, that property is not the village's property. I didn't think so, yeah. Yeah, we don't own it. So therefore there's not much we can do about it. But yes, you can go launch your kayak at the ramp for 20 bucks, includes parking, launch and parking 20 bucks. Right. And go up the ramp and go right. You can go any hour in the morning. There's a pay station. You put your thick card in. It's super simple. So, or you can get a permit, and then you don't have to write it. Yep. Or you can go to the which is what we have. And get a, a ramp permit. Yep. Which for residents, they definitely should. You should never. I always tell resident, if you come to this park more than four times, do not pay a daily rate. If you come once, maybe it's worth it. Yeah, yeah no, it's so worth it. Get the get the permit. Yeah. And it's just the convenience. You get your little placard for the car, and it's just so much easier. And then you can just. 
come and go as you please. Um, Jason, I do have a question. Um, you said that all the restrictions were lifted for the camp. Yeah. So does that mean that I'm assuming scheduling as far as trips and pool and that kind of things won't change because it's already it's already been planned and you guys yeah. were not doing that with all the restrictions that were in place. Was everything else like normal as far as like so uh as normal as normal could be I think you know we don't jump right into the water but like the kids won't need to wear the mask outside uh you know that's good the unvaccinated staff will wear a mask inside the un the kids don't need to now before like a week and a half ago they did need to wear them inside now they don't um so as normal as could be we were planning on doing help like the daily health screening like you have to do when you go to school because mm -hmm. that's what we had to do uh this week we found out we don't so we're going to let the parents know that that's not necessary anymore to do that daily screening and keep that record for the health department um which was going to be done electronically and was going to be time consuming because we had to make sure that every kid did it before they came to stepped on the property so um but generally as as smooth normal as possible yeah Okay, that's awesome. Um, I do have another question um, regarding the spray ground. So I don't know who's been on Facebook, but there's was a lot of chatter about how unhappy the residents are um, at the limited hours of the spray ground and that it's during camp hours, it's not usable except on the weekend. And I know that parents, the residents were looking to see about having this spray ground be open a little bit earlier during the week so that their young children could use it prior to campers being able to use it, or maybe having one day a week um, where the campers didn't use the spray ground. We have and that now, it's Fridays. Can't use it Monday through Thursday, the public uses it Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I, yeah, I guess people were thinking that's, you know, including Friday and the weekend. But as far as the hours go, um, people were looking for the spray ground to be open maybe an hour earlier before camp. And I know this was all a big thing that you guys just kind of went through with the hours of the spray right, ground. But the but beach opens at nine, camp starts at nine. The first group's in the spray ground at 9.05. So I'm not sure how we could open an hour earlier, but as soon as camp's out of there, it's on for the public. Um, so it's not I, 10 o'clock? I thought the spray ground hours were started at 10. The spray ground hours for the weekends, we open at 9. I mean, during the week, generally, it's 10 to 5. But if, if Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we'll be open at, we'll turn on at 9 for the public. You know, they were, I think people were talking during the week as far as when it was going to be usable for residents. Yeah, so from 2.50 to five is generally what I can, we can try to go to the village manager and ask them to go to six, but the beach beach staff leaves at six. So it'd have to go off at six. Um, and to be honest with you, it's a lot to run the water for one kid to, to be in there. I'm just relaying what I saw, what I read, just so. Right. You know. So we did expand the hours from, we just had it off only on Friday and Saturday and Sunday to now having it on when camp's on. So it's literally 29 days of camp that there'll be limited access. And then after that, it goes back to normal, seven days a week. Jason, is it posted somewhere, either on the website or where people pay so that- It's posted in multiple. Yeah, it's posted. It's not gonna come in there and say, I came to the spray ground and I can't use it. Okay. So we have, um, it's on the website, um, it's on social media. Um, we have like a, an A-frame sign that we'll put out when camp's there um, that says that when you like pull into the parking booth and then we'll have another one at the beach gate um, and we'll have another one near the spray ground. So we have, we'll have quite a few signs. But unfortunately this year, they felt that it wasn't the best option to mix campers with the public in terms of COVID. So that's the way we're we're keeping it. They still feel like we need our own swim area. We need our own, like, so for example, on the beach, we'll have one swim area for camp. And then to the left of that will be the, will be the public or in the middle of that. That's a, that's a county rule. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's not, it's not up to the village. It's up to the county right. board of health. But next year we would be under the assumption that we would be able to yeah. co-mingle again. You know what I'm saying? They just feel like the camp needs exclusive space uh, from the public when they're in aquatic facilities or sports facilities or inside a public space. Okay. I'm just relaying what I saw, what people were complaining about. I know there were going to be emails and things that were going to go out to the mayor and I don't know who else uh, from, from residents who we're looking for a change in how it currently operates. So I just wanted to just throw it out there so that, you know, you were aware. I, mean, I guess according to county rules, either the either the camp can use this like either the camp can use the spray ground when camp is in session or the public can use it. But it can't be combined. Is that correct, Jason? The way it was phrased to me was that it had to be exclusive use to the camp. During camp hours or just set times. Or is that not clear? Like, could the could the village camp say, you know, okay, we're gonna let the public use it from nine to ten, and then the campers can have it the rest of the day until camp is closed? Or it had to be exclusively no, when we the could camp do that. was the running. Issue is, is that we have a schedule, and that that means you're cutting swim time, you're cutting spray ground time down from a half hour a day down to fifteen minutes a day for each group, potentially. Understandable, um, but so you've got residents who are saying we pay taxes and and we pay for a permit to come to the beach and we can't yeah, use the spray ground. So it's the same, you know, you're weighing, it's both, everybody's paying and some people aren't right. getting the I full mean, use. Uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be really tough when you have 30 camp kids and you have two people from the public. I mean, all 260 kids are residents this year. They're all residents. So that's okay, well, it is what it is. Make. You know, listen, if, if that's the what they want to decide, then they could decide, take it away from the camp kids and give it to the public. But uh, that's, it can't you know. be both. I got it. Yeah, and it's also, Carrie, a very difficult time because we don't have any alternatives because of our limitation with We're busing. We're not going to the pool this year, you know? Yeah, we so it's, a, it's, 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 they're just going to have to get over it because it's unfortunate, but it's because of COVID. On a normal year, this has not been a situation that it has been preclusive of the public having access to the spray ground. This is an, you know, an anomaly year. And it's not something that's been a secret. We've been advertising this right. since March, since when we opened up the permit process, it's been on the website. It's not a secret. And All right, sure we need to move on. Let's go sure to the Capitol. I'm sure it's only a handful can I, of people. Can I just ask one, one other question, sort of a follow up of the the um, the Boy Scout. So, did they? I guess my first question is: So, did Kyle raise enough money for the Gaga Pit, and what's the timing on getting it um, up and running at Florence Park? He did raise enough money. Jeff, I think, was talking about the timing. What did you say after July Fourth, sometime? Yeah, after July Fourth. I think the Gaga Pit is coming in on July eighth. It's and shipped. Then, I know he ordered it because he raised yeah, the money. It, it's ordered. It's just uh, a matter of time of, uh, you know, like everything else, when it's going to get shipped. But I think I think the target date is somewhere along July 8th as a starting for Florence Park. So as soon as we get all the pieces and everything, and, you know, there's a lot of prep work to, to go along with it. It's not going to be, you know, a one-day process. But I think July 8th is the target date we're looking at. Thanks for bringing that up, Kristen. I, I, it's really important that we didn't ask that. Hey, this is one question. Uh, Jason, did you say your camp is fully registered at 260? Yeah. Okay, awesome. That's really, really good to hear. I mean, that's, a, that's like a reduced number though, but normally, uh, okay. we would, normally we're in like 320, but oh, okay. we registered under the pod system. We hired our staff under the pod <clears> system. <throat> so it's a little late when they give you different rules Two yeah. weeks yeah, yeah. Hard to... trust, trust me i know i know I, I feel your pain with running running a camp <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh, things always changing it's hard it's really it's hard this with covid it's been hard because the guidance changes so frequently that yeah definitely yeah. over the last two months they've changed so much with right. mask no mask and you know so i definitely feel your pain school you got 260 that, right like yeah it's tough yeah So do, can we go on to the capital project? Sure. Let me um, share my screen.
we can see the screen. Yeah. Can you guys see the screen? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's the capital plan that we been working on with uh, myself and Jeff and the manager's office and Dan and Dan Sarnoff and some other folks. Um, Jeff can probably go through, talk about his top portions if you want. Jeff, you want to just run them through and update them on particularly these things that we recently got approved? Yeah, so we, we put in, um, I put in a request a while ago to get our own seating equipment. And at the last board meeting, the board approved for that purchase. So the top three things you see here on the list have all been approved already for that. That all involves uh, seating equipment and a new tractor to pull the machinery and uh, to do other tasks around the village. That's great. It really is. We're going back to what we used to do many years ago. Jeff, thank you. Thank you. We're really excited to see what you can do with it. Now we also have water, which we didn't have years ago. Well, is... you bring up water. We're actually, uh, we're in the talks of actually expanding uh, ease of use of water. We're gonna run our own um, three inch lines out to right. certain parts of the fields. Right. So it's, it's always there. We could just quick connect right. and, and go. So a hell of a lot easier than dragging all those hoses. Yeah, 375 feet. Oh, quite a bit. Yep. But that's been in the works for like the last three or four years with the Westchester uh, Joint Waterworks. Is that still a deal, Jeff? Uh, no, Westchester Joint Waterworks got us our meter pits and everything. Okay. It's up to the village to run the lines, the octopus lines out to wherever we want. Got it. Okay, good but luck. It's, it's, uh, it's happening. Those water wheels do wonders. Yes, they do. Um, I mean, I'll just go down the list here. If anybody has any questions, they could just stop and ask. Uh, I put in for a new uh, pickup fed water system. Uh, last year, we were running off a little 12 volt AC pump. It would take about, I don't know, five minutes to fill one tree bed. Uh, wasn't very efficient. This year, we, you know, MacGyvered some stuff. I made a little better system. Now we're filling tree bags within like, I don't know, 45 seconds. Um, I put this in. It has a bigger tank and a gas-powered engine so I could fill bags and basically spray water up to 75 feet with no issues. Jeff, is there, are there more trees planted this year than in prior years, or is it about the same? Or It no. seems like a lot. This year was a, a catch-up year. Oh, okay. Uh, what, what we do when we when we water the trees is we take every tree that's been planted in the past two years mm -hmm. and still water them. We don't just water the fresh trees. So each each new tree gets two years worth of watering before we let nature take over. Right. So I believe this year we're at um, somewhere around 238 trees we water on an everyday basis. Wow. So with the old system, you're looking at maybe 20 a day. Right now we're pumping out close to 40. Uh, I believe with this piece of equipment, we'll be pumping out close to 60. So it's just, it's a lot more efficient for us. Right. It saves a lot of time and manpower. Uh, Jefferson Avenue Basketball Park, basketball court has already been approved. That work's actually starting Saturday. We're going to uh, close the park for the day and let the construction crews come in and take out the old hoops and and pour the foundation for the new hoop. So hopefully that's done by the end of next week and the kids could start enjoying that. Jefferson Avenue Park Improvements, this is a big topic on, I believe, a lot of people's list. Um, Jefferson Avenue Park is probably the oldest, excuse me one second. Jefferson Avenue Park is probably the oldest park we have in the village besides Ward. Um, I believe it's one of the, the oldest, most used park. Uh, the turnaround in that section of town has turned to more children than in the past years. 
So me and Jason, uh, you know, went through a plan where we would like to really bring that park into the 21st century. Uh, right now, there's one piece of equipment for toddlers to use. It's basically three steps up and a two foot slide coming down. Not really a lot to let the kids' imag imagination run wild. Uh, the older part, the older kids part of the park is outdated, things are broken. It's almost impossible to fix. Uh, you know, we band-aid a lot of stuff because you can't get parts for that equipment anymore. So I just believe that it's me, well, me and Jason believe that it's time to really bring that park up to the 21st century. Lands of Field backstop. Uh, as all of you might know, that Lands of Field is one of our most popular fields in the harbor. Besides Little League, it's used almost every night. Um, it's not only a safety thing, but it's a visual thing. Uh, the backstop that's up now is probably over 20 years old, rusted, dented. Um, really just want to, you know, make that field as beautiful as possible while increasing the safety. Uh, Stanley Avenue Pickleball Courts. Uh, we have gotten multiple emails from multiple residents that every other surrounding town has pickleball courts or they set aside a certain time on tennis courts for pickleball. Uh, I feel that if we put a pickleball court in Stanley Avenue Park, I think it will be highly used. Parks fencing and signage. Uh, if you drive around and look at all the different parks we have, you will notice that most of them do not have any signs whatsoever. Uh, Harbor Island Park has one at the top, uh, and that's basically it. Um, I believe just visually it looks better if we have all matching signage and the parks actually have their names on them. Uh, I don't know if anybody's been to Stanley Avenue Park, but when we redid that a few years ago, we actually got Stanley Avenue put on all the basketball benches. And I just think it really looks sharp. So looks awesome. Trying to expand that. Uh, everybody's favorite, Harbor Island Dog Park. Um, that's an ongoing discussion that hasn't been settled, but I want, we wanted to put it on the Capitol to just let everybody know that, you know, this is what we're gonna need if we're gonna uh, supply the residents with a dog park. The big one, Harbor Island Playground Park. Um, at any point in the day, if you drive down here, Harbor Island Playground is absolutely packed from residents to non-residents to people all over the place. Right now, the only place that we could get parts for this playground is in Canada. Uh, we recently changed a slide, I believe it was, right, Jason? Yeah. Yeah, we recently... and, and a octopus a spring toy. Octopus. Yeah. So we recently replaced a slide, and we have an octopus spring toy. It got held up in customs for weeks. 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 Not only that. It's the only manufacturer that still makes these parts. And they don't fit. They do not fit a 20 plus year old piece of equipment. Uh, we're in there once, twice a week, fixing rotted wood. Bolts are pulling out because the wood's rotted. Uh, it's just not in good condition for the amount of children that use that park daily. It's one of the busiest parks in Westchester. And I think that it's time for an upgrade. Uh, Harbor Island basketball court. Uh, maybe, Jason, maybe you could touch on this one a little bit. So Harbor Island basketball court, we're looking to put some sort of outdoor basketball court in the harbor. Location to be determined. I Once the county pier is done, I do think behind the parks department building is a good spot for one full-size basketball court outdoors. Um, and I think it's, I mean, that's, you know, we would have to go through, there could be other locations, but I think it's time we had a basketball court in the Harbor um, because it would be well used. It would be well used by the community, so. And your campers as well. 
Yeah, in the camp. Oh, you forget the camp alone. Right now we play basketball in the grass. Knock out. Right. So. I can't You'll believe see. there's not a basketball court down there. It just seems like such a obvious uh, thing that would be yeah. included in a park. It's I find it bizarre that there hasn't been one. Yeah. So. And I agree with you. And if you go to Columbus Park, if you go to Stanley Avenue Park, you go to Florence Park, and you see how well used they are. Oh yeah, they're it, definitely used. It's just incredible. And and that's but what I don't understand is how that could be a number fourteen. In comparison, if we were just talking about utilization over like a pickleball uh, court. I mean, well, I well think... Carlo, the, the problem with the Harbor Island basketball court is where sure. me and Jason feel is the right spot for it. There's going to be work going on. No, the, I understand that. For the county project. So, I mean, yeah. I would love, me personally, I would love to pick it up on the list. But right by the time but, they're done, but hopefully Jeff... we are at this point in time on the list. No, but the question I have for you, Jeff, is they've been talking yeah. about having that pier completed the last 25 years. So I'm kind of hesitant to really believe that they're gonna put a shovel in the ground based oh. on the history. And I know they're going out to bid, I think. They claim they went out, they're going, the month of June was the bid month. So Carlo, right. so yeah. you've, been, you've been dealing with this for 25 years? Yeah. Uh, I'm in the process me, Jason, and, and Dan and Jerry are in the process of actually picking the street lights that they're putting out on the pier. Okay. But right, that, so that's, that's, that's how close we are to them putting a shovel in the ground. Right, we're so we're at the stages where we're actually picking what kind of lights we want, what kind of fencing we want. Okay. Uh, I sent them the specs on the benches. It could we be as soon as October, we were told. Yeah. Okay. We, we went over a whole site plan where, you know, the village is going to allow them to store their uh, equipment and their office trailers and where they're getting power from out of my building. So it's, it's more closer than it has been in the last 25 years. Okay. And the question I have is start to finish. Is it a, a one year project? I think if because, I remember correctly. because of the times that they have to dig because of um, I forgot if it was crabs or fish. I think it's flounder. There's a DEC rule, so they can only do it at certain times at certain tides. So it it could be a certain time, numbers. certain time of the year. So I believe it's more than a one year project. Okay. I believe it's close to a two or three year project from okay. what the engineer was telling me. Okay. That's what we were told, Carla, when we were looking at putting the dog park back in that area. We were told that it was going to be a three year project and. Okay. So we're gonna to have to wait three years before we get a port down there unless we look for another suitable uh, spot. Correct. Yes. Or when they're done, when they're done. Um, right. I, I have a feeling it's gonna be closer to the two summer mark than the three summer mark, but who knows what could happen. And that's why we also haven't decided to put a volleyball courts there too, as we've yeah, been talking about. Yeah, which is another program that's, uh, right. we can't fit right. another person out right. there. We're maxed yeah. out on beach right. volleyball. Because so, that's where we were supposed to put the courts too, Jason. Okay, yep. let's let's continue. Okay. All right. Uh, next on the list is a new Ford F-150 uh, work truck. You know, our trucks take a lot of abuse. They sit outside all year round. They got it routed out. Uh, I mean, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, new Kubota. Question about that one. I mean, I'm not that I object to it. I'm just yep. curious. Doesn't the village have a overall kind of vehicle? usage and replacement policy or is it department by department it's it's department by department so uh so i put my vehicles on my capital when i feel it's necessary to replace a vehicle okay. um it's not an automatic you know every three-year thing where we get new trucks we have to I just want to uh, make a a blanket statement that this is um nora might be able to phrase it better than me but this is like a this is not a budget. That doesn't mean we're going to get no, one, 20. We could get zero. We could get all of them. We don't yeah. know. It just yeah. depends on things change. But if it's, it's not just, on this. A, it's not quite a wish list either. It's kind of you making right. an informed list of the things you think you right. need. It's not quite, it's not quite, quite a wish list either. It, they're informed decisions. But like they. Are, but the idea is that if it's not on here, we definitely can't do it either. You know what I mean? Got it. You know, 
what ha what happened is the the village hadn't really had a, a capital budget. So in 2019, a capital budget, 2019 into 20, a capital budget was developed, but the pandemic kind of st stalled all the process. So right now, um, Jerry is trying to make sure that every department has a capital budget so that, and things are ranked and prioritized so that we have an idea of how we should be planning for the future and how we should be spending as opposed to sort of um, doing things just as they come up. Right. And, each, and each of these things will ultimately get a full package. When I say that it would quotes and drawings, depending on what it is, and it would come to you and then it would go to the board. So this is more of a guide. So we know where we need to go and how we're going to get there. Thank you. Nora, just a quick question on, you know, a budget is, is two sides of a budget. So these right. are the expenses, but what is the village contemplating in, in money allocated for these two departments? Is that, well, that I mean, so, so no. So basically the whole, the whole idea of getting a capital budget is to figure out what are, what the likely capital expenses are, what the schedule of capital expenses are for things that have to be, you know, have a life cycle. And then they are fit into the budget planning process in terms of what revenues we have and what income we have. So this is not, this is really there, this is the stage of developing the lists of things that are anticipated capital expenses or projected capital expenses. And then you'll see how much money you actually have to. Yeah, I mean, this isn't like a one year list. I mean, every no, five, five years, this is. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a, it's, it's really just, it, and we're really just starting this process. We're like a year into it. So there should be like a five-year capital budget plan. And, and who determines whether it comes out of the village capital budget or whether it comes out of this recreation trust fund? That's a whole, that's a whole different question. That's sort of like a good problem to have, you know, because normally all of this would come out of a capital budget, out of the village coffer somewhere. But because we have this recreation fund, that can augment some recreation expenses. Most other departments, I say all other departments don't have that. Okay. Yeah, we're lucky. We have a trust fund. And the budget committee has been, you know, really working on this capital budget as well. All right, let's so we're all trust fund babies. <laughs> let's finish up parks. All right, uh, Kubota RTV with attachments. Uh, if you guys don't know, we use our Kubota for many different things around the village. Um, you know, we use it for ball fields. We use it for running around Harbor Island Park. We use it to uh, do events on the Marinick Avenue. We let the softball league use it. We, uh, we use it for uh, street fairs and stuff like that. But the main thing is um, we use it for uh, sidewalk cleaning during snowstorms. We have a plow mount for it. We have a bristle broom attachment for it. Um, with this piece of machinery, we were able to go from just cleaning uh, regular walking sidewalks to actually cleaning all the tracks and stuff inside Florence Park, inside Harbor Island. So when the snow stops and the sun comes out, people still have their walking trails to uh, like, for instance, the kids use Florence Park to get back and forth to, from school. Uh, a lot of residents use Harbor Island Park for exercise. So we clear all the paths in all the parks now so people could get to the train station, people could exercise, people could get to school, and it just gets people out of their house, you know, when the snowstorm stops and you get that, you get that sunny day a couple of days afterwards. Uh, John Deere 648R is a ride-on lawnmower, 48 inch. Uh, the one we are currently using is a few years old. So this is just like uh, the pickup truck. It's just a, um, you know, it will be a replacement for that. Uh, 18 and 19, I'm going to pass over to Jason. This is a recent thought for our capital plan. Um, was to see if we can throw in some turf aspect to our capital plan. Um, it's a work in progress, um, but we, I was speaking with Jerry with, about it and he said that we should at least put 
something in there. Otherwise, we will not be able to do it if we want to. Um, so we're working on it and seeing coming up with if it's doable and how many soccer fields can we fit in there? What about the diamonds, meaning the two closest to the bubble, not, not Little League diamond? Can we turf those and fence this, the perimeter and while still keeping the same soccer space and baseball space, if not more usable space? Um, so it's a thought, but that's generally what it's gonna cost if we wanted to do that. Um, and then the other option to that could possibly be uh, more along in the terms of all year round recreation would be to throw a bubble over one of those turf fields in the, um, in the winter time. Jason, does this contemplate anything on Taylor's Lane? Like we talked about that a lot and then it fell off, but it that's- does not, it does not, this, this whole, I don't have anything in here, rec, parks, that has anything about Taylor's Lane on it. Uh, until someone can convince me that it's feasible and something the community wants, it's just not on here. Well, it's less feasible than turfing the fields that may flood every 15 or 20 years. Yeah, but Dan, we got to raise the seawall. There's a lot more to then just, we wouldn't what? just turf it the way it is. You no, know I understand I mean? that. But there's also um, an $8 million seawall project. Is, to Kristen's question, um, you said that it's completely unfeasible that Taylor's Lane would become an athletic field? No, I, I didn't say that. I said until someone can convince me that, that it's feasible that the community wants it. We I, I would think the community wants it. We just haven't articulated a case for it. We I have many times over and I got the plans for it. Exactly. Okay. And, 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 and secondly, I mean, now that you brought it up, Kristen, I would say the same about the fields that on the Rushmore side of Harbor Island Park. Correct. Um, I just learned uh, last week from somebody who's been around here for a while that that used to be Meadowland uh, and it was only uh, mowed in the last couple of decades. So, you know, uh, digging that up and uh, grading it and making at least part of it into fields would be a wonderful new field option. Understanding that there's neighborhood issues as there are at all the parks we talk about. Um, but, you know, if we're gonna talk about turfing Harbor Island, which I think would be great if it was feasible, um, that's me personally, uh, we, we should probably talk about these other kind of, let's call them long odds projects where, you know, the feasibility, there's a long big build to figure out the feasibility and then, you know, raising the funding to do it uh, would be the secondary thing. I think the funds would be there, not just from the village, but from the community in the same way that the funds were found for uh, the high school field, for land, um, um, I can't think of the name of the baseball fields in, in Largemont, but you know, there, there's money out there. You just need to kind of articulate the case and, and, and get it going. And I don't- So I, I will don't say on the Rushmore side- ask people for money. So I can do a capital plan, um, but fundraising and things like that is not something that- no, I, I understand. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking more hypothetically that- No, I get you. Lead these kind of um, tough, to, tough to convince projects, I would throw those in there too. Why not? So Dan, on the Rushmore side, um, when we considered that spot for the dog park, um, we were told that there is- the, the residents would push back. Um, I'm sure they will. It, it's everywhere though. You know, you know, it's everywhere. They no, no, granted. NIMBY. I, of course, I'm, called NIMBY. NIMBY, of course it is, it's NIMBY. Okay. But so, yeah, um, as that's far as the- There's a question back about the spray ground hours. There's right. no way there's to make everyone happy. Right. And the lights, I mean, it's just constant. The lights don't defer the fields. I will say that you would have a hard time convincing me to put turf down at the harbor. I, I don't I feel I that turf I, that gets extraordinarily hot in the summer belongs down at the crown jewel of the village where people use the grass for more than just sports. You know, you would talk about if everyone's down there for 4th of July, they have to be sitting on turf. Like you'd have a hard time convincing me that turf is the right thing to do down there. Hence Taylor's Lane. 
that's just, just as, you know, an opinion and, and the very early stages of thinking about it, I would not be in favor of that. I, I'm, and I'm glad you brought that up. And that's why I kind of characterize my support as just right. me, because I'm well aware there's a huge diversity of opinion about turf itself, let alone the viability of it. I, I, I personally don't think it's viable down there just because of the uh, flooding that happens every 15 or 20 years. Right. But that's, um, and, and then thank you for bringing it up because Carrie's issue is one that is very, always, always comes up with turf. But that's why I, I again, you know, back to Kristen's point, it, it, these are all kind of long shot-ish projects. We might as well throw them on there if we're gonna put them on there and at least get the dialogue going because there's two big patches of land that are underutilized, Taylor's Lane and Rushmore yeah. That would be great if we could figure out some use that really maxes, maximizes their use uh, for the benefit of the whole community, not just people in the neighbors. Neighborhood. Does anyone know, um, Nora? I don't. I know Jerry's usually the one I get the info from about Taylor's Lane. Has the state officially cleared that for recreational oh, use yet? We're still not officially cleared to use it. Okay. And they test it. They test it twice a year mm -hmm. in the past, and never an issue. There's never been an issue there. Can I just ask, you know, Carrie talks about dog parks. She don't want to bring her dog to Taylor's Lane, but you'll let kids play on there, turf, soccer. No, I didn't say I wouldn't bring my dog to Taylor's Lane. I, a lot of people are won't. I, that, so, I never said I wouldn't. But so like, how would you bring kids there then? If a lot of people won't bring their dogs there, they're going to bring their kids there. <laughs> well, that's, and that's an issue. Absolutely. There's a lot of people that won't vaccinate either. I mean, I can't. It's a public health issue. And no matter how many times the DEC has tested and said it's a safe uh, area, and I've been hearing it, I've lived here 14 years, and I think it was about eight or 10 years ago when I heard officially that it was available for use, that there was no leachate. Thank you for nodding your head, Carlo, and confirming that. Um, there's no convincing some people. I, I, I don't know what to do about it, other than that's not a great reason not to do something because some people can't be convinced so, so it just would be nice if we could get the actual clearance from the state like I that would just that, that that's the first that, step that would be great if we could just first see if we can walk on it that my, would be my understanding was it was it was cleared by the dec years ago and i, I I'm, I'm and i'm shocked by that too because i was on a committee uh 12 years ago i sat in all those meetings and there was a discoloration in two neighbors' sub pumps, and that was it. And then, so they did a, a they did another drainage system. So uh, I think I really appreciate everyone bringing this up because I think I think it behooves us if this is a five year plan to put something on here about Taylor's Lane and also Rushmore. Both. It's a good okay. Way. Yeah, I mean, like we said, these are just potentials. This is not, this is, this yeah, is you know, yeah. to, to get it on there so that in the event we end up being able to do something, we can't, we're not told like, well, no, it wasn't on your capital plan. So we I agree. I think they should be on there. We can put all three right, right like, under here. Like I tell Jason almost every day, shoot for the moon and hope for the stars. So right. aim high because they're always going to knock you down a little. So you got to kind of, I agree, we, Jeff. I say we add them. This way, it starts a dialogue, and hopefully, it goes somewhere. My number one place would for a turf field would be Taylor's Lane. Absolutely, hands down. And you get two <laughs> soccer fields there, Dan. Yep. Hands down, I 100% agree with you. My my first. So just my change first. that from Lanza to Taylor's Lane. Well. The village manager feels that it should be in there, so I can add. Well, Taylor's let's let, let's let's not change it. Let's add it. We'll okay. Add. Let's, okay. Let's add it because when you get into Taylor's Lane, it's a whole different ball game because of that rubber membrane. So, right. so there's certain parts of Taylor's Lane that you could develop. You could dig down footings. You could dig down foundations. Other parts of Taylor's Lane, you could not. It's only top building. So. It's a whole different ball game of just going in there, uh, creating parking spots and making two fields. 
Understood, because it has a membrane. It has a, it it has a membrane on it. A membrane that can't like, be penetrated. Yeah. Can we so, just exactly, say care. Taylor's Lane development without specifying turf or whatever, what have you? Can we just put it in there as a Taylor's Lane recreational development? Well, they were also talking about recently converting it to a passive park. Well, well, regardless, it's a great idea. Let's right. let's just go with what she said because it's right. it's a blanket. And recreation is it could be anything. It could be the sports. Correct. It could be passive. It could, let's it could not be define so. it. Let's just not forget about it. And also, as Dan said, the West Base, West East, West Rushmore Avenue. West. That's the Rushmore oh, Avenue West, West Base Field. side. Yep. Okay. All right. Can we move on to the rec? I don't. I have to do. So, I don't know what the number. I could just gauge what a field is. You know. What do you say, Dan? You think you could fit two soccer fields in there? The blueprints. I'm telling you, I've got. Carlo blueprints. has the blueprints for that. He showed us. He showed us the blueprints right. that when we were had right. met in George, person. I'm gonna, a, I'm gonna put a. I'm gonna put a footer number in here, and then I'm gonna actually try to get some a scientific number on it. All right. Okay. Um, and then the other one was Rushmore, correct? Yeah. Yes. The Rushmore grass. Rushmore field, or whatever you want to call it. where I used to practice all the time to piss people off in that neighborhood. So the good news is um, there must have been a, a memo that went around to the Little League coaches because we've seen Little League um, teams practicing. They'll pick up a patch of grass and, you know, lay out some bases and run around. And They don't have a permit, but they're probably just doing it, you know? So, you know, uh, you know, the coaches want to, these are parent coaches and, because the fields are hard to get, especially in season, um, they'll go anywhere. Even on blacktop, Dan, as you know. Right. All right, so while Jason's doing that, I'm going to keep running down the list. Was there anything other than the Taylor's Lane and the Rushmore? Was there another one or no? I just made up 21. I don't think so. Well, to, to add? Yeah. yeah. Well, I've got, I've got three. Well, can I let me just finish going through my yeah, part of the absolutely. list and then we, and then we can absolutely. go through the adding. I'll be, I'll be quick. Yeah. Uh, the Ford F-350 is a replacement of our dump truck. We use dump truck to haul snow, uh, wood chips, topsoil, mulch, flowers, rocks, basically anything. It's a replacement vehicle. The two John Deere 1570s are our field grass cutting machines. 72-inch uh, decks, that's what we use to cut most of the parks. Uh, those are on in the future. Ford F-250 is another uh, work truck looking for replacement in the future. Lean to outdoor storage. The main problem with our vehicles is salt water. Um, for instance, one of our trucks has 50,000 miles on it and it is totally rotted out. If it wasn't rotted out, we probably could get another five years out of the truck. I'm looking for some kind of storage solution for my vehicles. This way, they are at least protected from the elements for a few more years, and we get a few more years out of them. And that is all on my capital wish list, we'll call it. Any questions? All right, I'm done. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Carl, do you want to talk about what you wanted to talk about? Yeah, as long as I Go ahead. All right. So the three items that I'm thinking of, um, we spoke about briefly tonight about the spray ground. And I, years ago, when we first started, it was supposed to be 3,200 square feet. It got cut into half because they didn't think it was going to work. But it's been a grand slam. And a couple of years ago, Jason, we were also entertaining the idea of expanding it again. Yeah, I got it on my, we didn't get to recreation yet, but oh, it's, it's, under, it's under recreations, but it number five, it's number five under recreation. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, whoops. Okay. So that's in there. The second thing also, maybe it's in there is the uh, band shell. That's not in there. Right. So that is in dire need of repair or replacement. 
Carlo, that was on my list, and that's my mistake. I meant to add it in. Okay. The bandstand you're talking about near the beach? Yeah, what's existing right there, you know, halfway Yeah. Up. Well, right. I, I, I actually have it in, and I forgot to, I don't know why, it's in my notepad. Uh, I actually priced out to making a bigger one because it's so right. absolutely it's so utilized right that I feel the size we have has been outgrown. Correct. And then we won't have to rent a stage for a thousand. We had a we had a June every... we had a Juneteenth event last weekend, and there was eight people up there, right. and it was it felt crowded. Right, and when they have the concerts during the summer months, basically they've got like say six members, you know, it's just yeah. really tight. And then I know there's been discussion and we've spoken about this, that I guess the Emblem Theaters uh, may throw some shows down there. Oh, um, they are. I forgot to talk about that in my update. Yes, they right. are. Those are planned right. and we're, we're close to. They're going to do that in conjunction with the Arts Council. Right. Because I, I was also. Gonna, I believe they're going to rent a stage. There was also conversation two years ago about the town of Marinick and the village of Marinick jointly purchasing a portable stage. Yeah, right. show that has so electricity for, you know that so yeah. um so i think that whatever happens with the band shell probably talk with the arts council too because right. that they are they need a bigger stage for most of the concerts right. as well so we rented stage this year i rented the stage from the county for them mm -hmm. uh i think we paid a thousand dollars a night for the stage and then seven hundred dollars a night for the, to hold the rain dates on the stage so to almost three thousand dollars a little over three thousand dollars and and the reason i'm bringing that up i'm sorry go ahead i just want to know would the band shall go under parks or rec or don't you know or doesn't it matter it would probably parks i'd say yeah which i'm gonna i'm adding it in as we go so i will you'll get an updated list you know i'll send it out to yeah everybody. like i said that was my fault it's, it's in my notebook and i actually yeah. priced out all the material for it yeah no so problem. We'll, We'll 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 update that because we got to get that in. We got to get this back to Jerry anyway. So we'll, me and Jeff will okay. update these financial numbers tomorrow. All right, but if I, I've got a question also, and I'm not certain if anyone's gone to or I, I sent an email in reference to site visits, maybe. The I did. And the one in particular that I'm questioning right now is the one in in Rye. You can see what they're doing for their campers and what they're doing for the community. How they're building all the shelters. Um, so. You know, I don't think this should be only be a, a band shell. It should also be a camper shell because we rent a tent. Jason, was it about twelve thousand dollars or something like that? Uh, we rent multiple tents. So right. like this year, our tent bill was probably close to nine thousand. Right. In the summer. Right. Yeah. So if you do the math, you know, I, I look what Rise doing basically there for their summer campers and also for their community. It just doesn't make sense to me that we're not pursuing something along those lines as well. So I think, I think I think the band stand can be if we build it right can be used for concerts. It could be used as a rental place. It could be used as a local spot for groups like artistry and to use for for programs or school of rock or to do right. yoga classes. Right. I mean, I can think of like seven hundred million things I could do under a, a nice right. big so, band with lighting okay. and sound and power. So and Carl, when, when when I say bandstand. My vision for it is more like pavilion, right? A ground level covered Correct. pavilion. Correct. Because it's great being up off the ground when you're in a band. Yep. Yep. Uh, the only problem is if you rebuild it in wood with it being outside in the salt water, of course. it's 10 years max. Right. Right. So my, my vision is maybe pavilion, flat ground, when bands do perform maybe we could put like a stage in there right. a raised stage so everybody could see them yeah. as long as we get something jeff that's all i'm shooting yeah. for a structure of some kind it could be a common and it'll make a ton of money going back to uh jason's point of renting yeah. it out and so forth yeah i mean listen the deck is great but the deck is once it's filled it's filled we don't have anywhere else to right. book a right. party you know it's hard right. so all right so and the last one jeff basically is for you um I've been, you know, when Craig was around, we've been talking about it for years. A 10-yard garbage truck, maybe, make your life a little easier? Jeff? The problem with the 10-yard garbage truck is what makes our life easier in picking up garbage in parks 
is actually being able to fit the pickups and the Kubotas into the parks to get the garbage. Mm -hmm. um, we have a bunch of tight parks that a 10 yard garbage truck just wouldn't fit in. So if I got a 10 yard garbage truck, my personal opinion on it is uh, Florence Park. I wouldn't be able to, to get to around the track. So I'd park but, the truck outside. But, and, but, but a 10 yarder, a 10 yarder is a 350. Basically, that's what you guys basically have. It's like a 250, 350. Yeah. In size. With, with the back, with it on the back, I won't be able to fit into the track at Florence Park to pick up all those cans. The, the trees to... and the lights, because we go on the oh, side of the basketball. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, because the only reason I'm saying it, the garbage truck as well is like, for example, you know, we're going to have the fireman's carnival. We're going to have the car show. There are a lot of functions down there that yeah. you can basically, you know, utilize it. I mean, try to get, you know, over again, let's not go back, Carl. Like getting a, a dumpster, you know, a sizable one um, also. I mean, that would be beneficial as well, you know. So, so I like where you're going with this. Getting a dumpster truck for us would be right. more beneficial. Right. Because that's a little more... We could use it for many other things other than garbage. Correct. I, that's I, where you put your, me personally, I, I like to buy equipment that I could use for more than one thing. Right. And exactly. something like a 10-yard roll-off truck yep. would be excellent because during yep. events, I could use it to haul mulch. I could use it to haul topsoil. I could right. use it to haul snow. Right. So that's something that I would be interested in putting on here, yes. Right. A uh, ten, little 10-yard ten roll-off, yes. Right. 10-yard exactly. garbage truck. I just don't see for the amount of money that they are. I don't. I don't see how I can utilize it more than just picking up garbage. As okay, we need to move on. Okay, because it's getting late now. So could we finish up with a ten-yard roll-off? I could use for more than one thing. Okay. What else is left to go over? All right, I'll quickly just run through recreation. We we looked at this once and we didn't really have anything really different uh lands of field lights we all know need some we're spending a lot of money on electricity uh for using really outdated and old technology um which is unfortunate it's feel i feel like we're flushing hundred dollar bills down the toilet every time i turn them on um so that's a project that 150,000, but over eight to ten years it's going to pay for itself and it will last probably that's longer a long than payback. these are. Well, it's eleven thousand a year in electricity savings. Okay, let's go. So, uh, red and blue room floors, we got to do those out. out um, they're shot. They've been in there for a long time. Uh, we also need to do uh, replace all the perimeter doors here. They're rotted through, so we have like a lot of metal plates on them because of the salt water. Just holes right through them, rusted through. Um, and as part of that, we want to try to have some sort of security access fob system to get in and out of the building because between the instructors and this one, that one, and handing out keys, it's not practical when you can give someone access for a certain day, hour, time, minute. It's super intuitive. Um, like Carlo said, we the second expansion of the spray ground, I wouldn't say second expansion, but the second phase of it. Um, of what the little rehabilitation project we did not too long ago, um, which is a big project. Outdoor uh, beach showers would be huge. It's like we have a little shower out there, but if we had similar to something like Oakland Beach had, where you know you got the overhead pull chain and you know people can shower off instead of having to use essentially like a little faucet thing that that's installed out there now. It's terrible. Uh, recreation vehicle uh as part of uh, our current rotation of vehicles i also have a, a pavilion beach pavilion a pa system so that way we can communicate with beach patrons if they're emergency or if we have like a tiki night we can play music or um have a band plug into it um we have a toro utv which is like an electric utv for summer seasonal labor right now they're using the golf cart which it's not meant for um that's like more of like a wish list i would call that a wish list item but um we would definitely be well used and oh i have outdoor beach showers twice so i'll take that out i'm not sure how that got can, I, can i ask about the beach showers and i don't want to hold down the meeting but aren't there 
fairly inexpensive options that can just be literally screwed onto the a garden faucet and you have an, uh, a pull chain shower. I, seems to me I've seen them in catalogs and that kind of thing. So the issue is we don't have enough pressure to where the water needs to go. We have to re, Jeff can explain the issue now. Um, so the, the issue is that the building's so outdated, the way they ran water lines uh, really wasn't smart. It was kind of just picked up off all different things. So when you run a shower out here, you know, it's possible that one of the toilets doesn't flush. So instead of just throwing a shower head on a water line, it's really we have to fix the foundation of it first for it to even be, uh, well, for it to even work correctly or even be worth its while to do it. So that that number is so big because it's it's not just it's not just what you're seeing it's not just what you're using it's it's where we're going to get the water supply from some things need to be fixed before it's properly done. We yeah, don't the do concrete any, pad in the shower is the easy yeah, we, part. We don't, we don't want to do anything that that you know been done in the past that will get the same results. We're looking to do things to better the better the pavilion and the beach, not just add to the many issues we already have. Right now, we have an electric pump that is pushing the water from the pavilion out towards the shower just to get a dribble. This is for it to get to dribble out. I don't know who did those water lines, but it's awful. So the bad, the bad part of that is we have a 60 PSI sprinkler pump pumping to the shower outside, but they ran the water line in one inch poly, which isn't handled for 60 PSI pressure. So the pump just basically spews water out underneath the sand before it gets to the shower. So this is what we're trying to prevent from doing again. Uh, we, we would like to do it right from the start this way, you know. This lasts. is a big, th this sounds like a lot of money for not much, for a, a little functionality at, at, to my estimation at this moment. But we have so many other projects that, um, that aren't as um, um, that don't necessitate such an expenditure to get uh, because of the severity of the um, infrastructure. Well, well, like we said, this is this is sort of like a combination of a wish wish list and a five year plan. So, it's, sure, we we look at it as it's better to have it on now, and if it creates a discussion, then it it's at least on there. Because if it doesn't if it doesn't make this, then you know it kind of gets left in the dust. So. You're completely right about that, I believe. Okay. All right, so cool. This is a very fascinating discussion um, because there's lots of things. And now let, let's look at what we have in the bank. So this is just a quick, just to polish. So I think that the capital discussion goes hand in hand with the trust fund discussion because in order for it really to be a trust fund project, it should be on the capital project sheet. Um, so this is what we have. This is where we've got the money from. Um, and this is what we spent it on to date. And this is what our current balance is uh, in the account right now. Great. The color coding is basically, there's, a, there's a, a, I guess a philosophy that we should try and keep the money in the neighborhoods from where the developments were built. Yeah, so we did our best to kind of split the village, kind of split the money based off where the Wait. project happened to be. I'm, I'm curious why the Phillips Harbor line is yellow when that's right across from Harbor Island Park. Line so I've got to I've got a question, okay? And maybe you can explain this, the logic behind this. This is so, the last question. I'm sorry. So the revenues that are generated um, from the, the organizations that down at Harbor Island, that goes into a general fund. Why does that not just remain at Harbor Island as I was promised but by Keith Waits, I think, whatever his name was. What are you talking about, the field maintenance fees? 
Yeah, I mean, it, that goes into a general fund, Jason. How can, like, here you're saying these they are the state There's market. no way they can segregate the funds, Carlo. That there's no, I don't believe that there's a mechanism in the, in the village's financial systems, nor are they authorized to segregate funds that way. But I was, but again, these, I just don't understand these all this go to general funds. You know, but they, still. The promise, and I remember this conversation too, the same right. way you do. The right. promise was that those funds would always be used um, or viewed <coughs> as available for Harbor Island specific projects. And you're right, that hasn't happened. In fact, right. I, you know, um, but um, I, you know, every, every time you've brought it up or I've brought it up, the discussion um, turns around like the aerating and seating, which has not really worked over the years, which is why I'm glad Jeff has said, let's bring it in house, let's get the equipment and start doing it ourselves. So, and but, Dan, we said on the budget committee, we spoke about that many a times. Yes. Right. And, uh, right. Can I just, Phillips Harbor, I'm just curious because literally it's right across the street from Harbor Island Park. Why is that yellow? Is that just an oversight or is that something, or am I missing I something? Know, I got to look into it. I can't. Okay. I can't think back right now. I could be wrong. It's uh, not. All right, so can, uh, you are right, Dan. Uh, Dan, I'll find out though. I can't. Let's have a motion yeah. to adjourn I'm the sure meeting. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. okay, go ahead. Can we have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Dan. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Kristen. <laughs> uh, oh, well, I, I don't know if I can go part of the minutes. Manny uh, Ennis sent an email during our meeting to yeah. say he missed because He's got a new grandchild, so. Oh. Awesome. Just today. He had a good excuse. That's a reasonable excuse. All those Jeff. in favor? Yes, Carlo. Aye. Aye. Great job planting. Thank you very much. At the police station there, working hard. Yeah, we just put the blue stone down today. I the saw bench it. and the, yep. and the uh, art piece is going in tomorrow, so. Yep, long overdue. Thank I'm, gonna, you. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna send an email out to the, the Parks and Rec Board and, and the Arts yeah. Council. Looks great. Pictures and everything. So glad, glad you noticed, Carlo. Thank you. Thanks, oh, I've been Jeff. noticing a lot. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. I think Carlo is is observant. <laughs> yeah, pretty thorough also. Good, I like that. Bye. So, have a good be one. well, everybody, and have a happy fourth of July. <laughs>